Hi, this is Carissa O'Brien and I'm here with Rick Kendrick with Rapid Deployment Products and Kendrick EMS and he's going to give us a quick demo of the Code 2. You would normally use proper EMS protocols and procedures of stabilization and holding your patient and taking BP, doing all your, your ABCs before you get to this procedure. We're going to assume that this is all being done and has been done and now we're going to move on to actually packaging Julie and uh, showing you some of the steps. Okay, okay, are you ready? Ready. Put the color on her. <laughs> Smile, Tommy. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, I'll just stick the hair in it. Uh -huh. We're good. How much sound does this thing pick up? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, go, good. go, go. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, in a normal procedure, my biggest caution that I give to people is that once you put the collar on, the person maintaining stability of the head and neck continues to hold their head and neck and you don't let go of it. But Jason, my assistant, I need him to do other things, so we're going to let Julie's head go. But keep in mind, there is a rescuer there holding onto her head. The coat is easy enough. If you put it on the ground, you get a little dog ear, you put your foot on it. And particularly for short people, but I am tall enough to be able to get it out of here. And you just lift it up, it comes right out of the bag. Often I watch people fight with it, and that's really how easy it is. Take the piece parts out. We're ready to pass it behind the patient. We're assuming that she was driving the vehicle. Okay, about a 45 degree angle. And what it is, you're pressing down on the structure to pass it in behind her back. You reach in and make sure that it doesn't catch up on her belt. Extract her wallet, check for ID, and then you upright it once you're through the door. You want to strap? Take them out. Take the leg straps out, just put them out of the way. You wrap the side pieces around your patient. And here's one of the most critical points that you need to keep track of and not forget is that you now lift it up until you see it snug up onto the armpits and the, ar the shoulders begin to almost shrug because <coughs> sidebar, you see it's right up under the armpit. This is the lifting point that you would normally pick up your patient. So this is your lift point. If this is snug up under the armpit, then you'll be able to use these handles to move your patient. Nice deodorant. Thanks. You're welcome. You take the middle or yellow strap. One of the more important things to keep in mind is that if you feed this strap and pull, you take the tension off, it's really easy. If you just pull this, you can drag her all the way out of the car before you cinch anything up. Feed it towards the buckle and cinch. It'll tighten right up. You just put it up into snug. Okay. Are we okay, assistant? We're good. We're doing good? We're good. Okay. Now what we're going to do is place the uh, leg straps. This is another critical area that uh, most people miss. You put it under the leg and you seesaw back and forth. Now here's what gets lost when you're doing in training. When you're training in a classroom, there's certain portions, particularly on a female, these are zones, no-go zones. You don't want to touch their derriere. You don't want to touch their breasts. There's things you don't want to touch. So quite often, because I'm afraid to touch it, you leave the strap way outside the thigh. 
This is what happens when you lay the patient down, they stay in a dying cockroach position, their legs are up in the air. Treat the uh, training as though you were in the field, you're actually working on a patient. So now you're working the strap, you keep sliding this until you have your finger in the crack, you, between the butt cheeks here, you got your thumb in there and you're straight up the middle. And then the strap comes back and attaches. You want to get that one, Jason? Yep. So here's a question that comes up quite often about whether you go back to the same side, you crisscross in the groin. Well, if you came right up the middle, it really doesn't matter. They're both in the same spot at this moment. It really doesn't matter whether you go back same side or you crisscross in the middle because it's right in the middle. Okay, because I mildly erred, forgot to put our patient all the way back, we're going to have to pad behind her head because we're not going to be able to push her all the way back. How are we doing, Jason? Doing good. Okay. We're good. You want to bring the flap around? Sure. Okay. Okay. Actually, I'm very comfortable. I feel very safe. Now, if you're using a secure collar and it is on years and years and years ago, and I'll still call this a chin strap. We quit doing chin straps because they were afraid that a, a patient that became ill and wanted to vomit, they wouldn't be able to get their mouth open. That's totally wrong. <laughs> well, part of it is they used to go up, used to put the chin strap on like this. Yes, it would hold the mouth shut. But then if you come back horizontal, and you're coming through where the, the hinge of the mandible here, they're gonna be able to open their mouth. But also, if you're using a good stiff collar and it's on properly, you come around the collar and you're actually attaching the collar to the device. Now, you notice a change on this code too, a little bit different, uh, is that we have these top flaps, you can turn them back independently. Uh, for women that are a little more uh, large up top, uh, or you can leave them out, you can turn the bottom ones back for if they're pregnant. There are so many different ways that you can strap, uh, but this gives you some of the versatility. I'm gonna turn that first one in. Sure. Now what we're trying to do is give her a little extra stability without compromising. This should enhance you nicely. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now what we've done is we've used all of the straps. And if we had a lot of time, we'd backtrack a little bit and I would show you how you could do this for rapid extrication type uh, evolution. But we have the uh, gurney and the long spine board waiting outside the vehicle. We're ready to move. We go back, recheck the straps because see, as soon as you start putting extra straps on, they loosen, retighten. Get the leg straps. Okay. We set, we're out here. Grab that one. Got this one? You got the handle? You got the handle? Handle, handle. Okay, turn her, just turn. Okay. You rotate your patient. Keep under her knee. Now, if you watch this very closely and you do this in class a couple of times, we're going to lay her back, keep her suspended above the seat. If you put the long spine board, the top of the long spine board to the far side of the seat, her head will go exactly where it needs to be on the board. So all we're gonna do is lift the legs, put the head down, okay? Head is positioned on the spine board where it needs to go. We didn't vertically lift her, we didn't rotate her lower spine, she's now laying on the backboard ready to go out of the car. Okay, let's stand her up right now. <coughs> What I was talking about earlier, these are those leg straps that people say are too tight to use. If I was actually doing a vertical lift, I would have to retighten the leg straps. But you've got to come through the midline, right through the middle, so they'll loosen up. That's the basics of uh, Code 2 uh, application.
<laughs> Fantastic. Well, again, we have been today with Rick Kendrick from Kendrick EMS and Rapid Deployment Products. We've seen the latest innovation in spinal immobilization with the code 2. And for more information, you can go to www.rapiddeploymentproducts.com. Thank you.